Mark Passio, one of, the org one of the hosts of the Free Your Mind Conference, is an independent researcher, public speaker, and radio talk show host from Philadelphia. Mark has undertaken the task of assembling massive amounts of research in the areas of metaphysics, occultism, spirituality, symbology, and consciousness studies. In 2007, Mark began presenting this information in the form of a unique lecture series entitled, What on Earth is Happening? With the intention of bringing the implications of this body of knowledge to greater public awareness. In 2010, Mark began hosting his own weekly talk radio show called What on Earth is Happening, which is broadcast live every Tuesday evening and simulcasted in part on Oracle Broadcasting as part of the IntelHub radio show. Mark is a passionate, compelling, and absolutely focused speaker, and his presentation this evening will indeed free your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Passio. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you all for being here this evening. And this is going to be, I believe, the only presentation that is not intended for audience members. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. My presentation this evening is entitled Occult Mockery of Police and Military Personnel. And this is who I am speaking to. Okay, the audience will much from understanding this knowledge, but I am directing this to the police and the military of every country on this planet. George Orwell, author of the book 1984, said, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. So this information may be a bit unpleasant but I would hope that most will not go into this modality, which I call emotional mind control. And this is responding to information which makes one feel unpleasant by rejecting the veracity of that information. And that is a very, very powerful form of mind control. Because something may make you feel bad does not mean that it is untrue. Kierkegaard said there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. The other is to refuse to accept what is true. There is such a thing as truth. It exists. We can come to know it. And these are the only two reasons that humanity suffers, that we undergo self-inflicted suffering is because we either believe that which is not true or we refuse to accept that which is. This information is occult. It has been occulted from the view of most people. Occult, as Jan Irvin said earlier, comes from the Latin verb occultare, meaning to hide, to conceal, or to keep secret. It is simply hidden information. Hidden knowledge is what ultimately keeps this planet under control, under mind control. And it works through two basic methodologies. The first is hierarchy, or a chain of command. The second is compartmentalization, meaning each area being kept distinct from the other and the other area not knowing what the other one is actually doing, so you don't see the interlocking pieces of the agenda. Occultists are the rulers of this planet, plain and simple. And they are dark occultists. And I have first-hand experience, so I'm qualified to speak on this topic because I was directly involved in the dark occult. I was a priest in the organization known as the Church of Satan for years. And admittedly, this is the Boy Scouts of the Satanic hierarchy, at best, at best. It is a psychological profiling system in order to take people up who display psychopathic tendencies 
for grooming into higher areas of the dark occult. Anton LaVey himself appointed me priest on March 19th. Okay, a very significant occult date. This is a letter from his wife, Blanche Barton, and you'll notice that it says Mark Rokar. That is indeed me. There is my home address on the letter. That is a demon name which I took as part of my occult, dark occult initiation. It is a cat demon from the Gnostic book, the Pistis Sophia. Okay? I took it because I am born under the sign of Leo. Blanche Barton said, Dear Mr. Rocard, Dr. LeVay has been favorably impressed with the skill and mastery you have shown in various opportunities to represent the Church of Satan and Satanism in general. You have proven yourself to be magically and materially adept. Therefore, he felt it was high time you were granted the title of priest in recognition of your dedication, knowledge, and ability. May the fires of hell continue to strengthen and inspire you. Hail Satan, Blanche Barton. Hidden knowledge controls the world, and that is what the dark occult are using against us as a weapon. What is this hidden knowledge? Ultimately, it is knowledge about nothing else at the deepest core fundamental level but the knowledge of who we are. Our consciousness and how it works. And these are the three modalities of consciousness. It has been called mind, body, spirit. But it is indeed our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. That is the true holy trinity of consciousness. And it is all about us. That is the knowledge that they have occulted from sight. It is also the knowledge of how there are physiological expressions for three, these three modalities of consciousness, particularly in the brain. We have three complexes in the human brain. The first is the reptile complex, the R complex. This is responsible basically for controlling our instincts, our basic survival mechanisms, and motor skills. It is also called the brain stem. And this is the lowest consciousness part of the brain. We have a midbrain which helps us to experience emotion. And that is known as the limbic brain, or simply the mammalian brain. And then we have a higher brain, a human brain, the human neocortex, which is ultimately responsible for higher order thought functions when, when it is operating in a state of balance. If it is not, we revert into either emotional mind control through the limbic system, or into male dominator behavior through the R complex. This part of the brain, the neocortex, the higher brain, the human brain needs to be balanced. That is ultimately what should be our ultimate goal in life is to bring those two hemispheres, the masculine solar left brain hemisphere and the feminine lunar right brain hemisphere into a state of harmony and balance so that it opens the third eye human pineal gland and it balances the brain and I've displayed the symbols of the chalice and the coming together to form the blazing star or the all-seeing eye to represent that concept. This is what happens when the human brain is in a state of balance on the left, a holistically balanced brain. When it is in a state of imbalance, the neocortex shows a pattern like that. And that is electrical deadness of the brain. Generally, that form of electrical deadness of synaptic damage from chronic left brain hemispherical imbalance is caused by high levels of adrenaline pumping through the central nervous system. Well, when we think about high levels of adrenaline, that brings us to these two groups of people. There is a lot of physical brain damage that has taken place. Make no mistake about it. And I'm going to talk about how the dark occultists who own these people, own them, feel about them, or as you will see, don't feel anything at all about them. As a matter of fact, they are the most mocked individuals on the planet. If you think that they have contempt for the general sleeping public, you haven't seen anything. 
they call the general public, dark occultists, they have two terms for people that I've only ever really heard them use. They call the general sleeping public the dead. The dead is what they refer to the public. Because their rationale for this is, if you do not have activated thoughts, activated emotions, and activated actions, therefore you are completely unconscious and therefore not truly alive. And therefore, we may treat you however we wish to treat you. If you think that's bad on how to think about someone, another living being, wait till you hear what they call these individuals. They call these individuals, and from first-hand experience, from their lips to my ears, they call these people our dogs. That is their name for the military and police. Our dogs. I have also sometimes heard them referred to simply as our pets. This is what they actually think of these people, as human pets. Human pets is how the dark occultists view the military and the police. And that can make you as uncomfortable as it gets, but that's the, that is the case. That is the truth. In this presentation, we're going to look at occult symbolism, but it's not going to be as overt as this. Now, this is a U.S. naval base at Coronado Island, San Diego, clearly showing the symbolism of Nazism. And this is the reversed swastika as seen from above. The SS, the symbol of the Schutzstaffel. Okay? We're going to look at symbolism that's a little bit more veiled than that and harder to see unless you're initiated into the occult, particularly the dark occult. The pentagram, okay? It represents the five elements, earth, air, water, fire, and spirit, with the fifth point, the fifth element, spirit, raised to the most significant position, meaning that it needs to be in ultimately superiorship above all of the other elements of nature. That is the cosmic source from which we all come. And you can see it has stargate symbolism there on it, which we're going to talk about. The ancients would often depict the pentagram with a man or a woman with its uh, head at the top representing spirit and then its extremities at the other four points representing the other elements. And this is a pentagram in proper, in its proper aspect and in balance, representing a person who understands their divine nature. This is the satanic pentagram and this is the official sigil of the Church of Satan. It is an inverted pentagram and I'll not use my own words to describe it. I'll use the high priest of the Church of Satan's words. This is from Anton LaVey, founder and high priest of the Church of Satan from the Satanic Bible. The Baphomet, which is what that emblem is known as, represents the powers of darkness combined with the generative fertility of the goat. In its pure form, the pentagram is shown encompassing the figure of a man in the five points of the star, three points up, two pointing down, symbolizing man's spiritual nature. They're telling you right there, they understand we have a spiritual nature. They know this. They know this, okay, but they propagate the exact opposite of it. In Satanism, the pentagram is also used, but since Satanism represents the carnal instincts of man or the opposite of spiritual nature, the pentagram is inverted to perfectly accommodate the head of the goat its horns representing duality, thrust upwards in defiance. The other three points inverted, or the trinity denied. And that trinity is not the Christian trinity as it is commonly known, but it is indeed our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions, which the dark occultists seek to suppress at all times. The three of them to keep in a state of deadness, now, let's look at where the pentagram is used in military and police symbolism. The first and most obvious is the U.S. Army, which its, its, its sigil, its emblem, is simply a giant star pointing upward. The star pointing upward in its proper aspect represents sovereignty, self-ownership, as Larkin Rose so eloquently explained. This is being your own master, your, uh, controlling your own destiny in life. 
not taking orders from other people, not having anyone else lead your mind or your actions or your behavior. And you're not going to get that in this institution. You're going to get the exact opposite of that. But they're putting that symbol there as the symbol of that institution to convey the concept of sovereignty in proxy. This is how symbolism works. Because that symbol goes to the subconscious, and the subconscious already knows the meaning of the upright pentagram. There it is on the third eye, which we're going to see repeated over and over again, of good old Uncle Sam. Here it is, upright, in a five-star general's emblem. The U.S. Air Force, I threw this one in here, it's pretty unique. This is their emblem. This was in Freeman's presentation times. Now, on, on first look, you might not see it, but I'll highlight. There's the star, okay? Up, we're upright again. But if you color the, the different components differently, I think you can see a different shape comes out. And that is indeed the face of a demon. I don't know who, if you can see that there, but it's an angry, scowling demon with, you know, its eyes slanted downward. And indeed, that is what the Air Force basically acts like. They swoop in from above. That's, all, that's similar to the face of an owl as well, a scowling owl, which is also another dark occult symbol. Here's the inverted pentagram on the Victoria Police's logo. Now, whose right are they upholding? The people of Victoria or are they upholding the British crown? Well, I think you can tell because the British crown is in, in the superior position. And that is who they're serving, not the people. There you see on the inside five stars again, all pointing up, representing sovereignty, of which this organization has nothing whatever to do with. Here's one of the most satanic emblems on the face of the earth, the Military Medal of Valor, which people would hold in a complete different light unless they understand the esoteric dark occult symbolism that it contains. We'll get into more of it later, but I just wanted to point out clearly there an inverted pentagram with the goddess symbolism there in the middle of it. The goddess in different ancient traditions represented our emotional aspect, the sacred feminine, which Laura Eisenhower so eloquently went into yesterday. And that is put right into the middle, into the heart of the inverted pentagram. And we'll see there's even more covert symbolism later. The inverted pentagram can be found geo geomantically, okay? It into, put into the Washington DC street system. This is called a Faustian pentagram with one broken arm. I won't get too deep into that, but this building right here is the White House. And that's the commander in chief of the armed forces. And an inverted pentagram points directly at the White House in the Washington DC street system. The Pentagon, the place where war is waged from in this nation, imperialism, okay, is the very hub or the heart of the five-pointed inverted pentagram. Here it is on the FOP's logo, a Masonically Connected Institution. And I'll, I make the distinction, there is such a thing as true, esoteric, positive, uh, light Freemasonry versus what has become a completely uh, infiltrated institution, dark masonry. And the lodge system is in a state of disarray. And I know there are some masons right in this room. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this on my podcast right now. Uh, the shows I've been doing are all about Freemasonry recently. And you can see the distinction that I'm making between true Freemasonry and dark occultic masonry. And there's a world of difference between the two. Here we see the inverted pentagram again on the third eye chakra, put right on the forehead of the person who's being mocked occultically by putting it there. They're telling them they're in a state of total denial of their own spiritual nature, and they're putting that emblem right there, and they can't see it. The all-seeing eye is the next symbol that needs to be understood. This is a commonly misconstrued symbol. What it ultimately represents is the balanced brain hemispheres combined with the heart. So it's the heart-mind come to full expression. And this is a symbol that is co-opted and perverted. 
and come to be used or identified with the dark occultists. However, that is not what it really represents. What it really represents is light. It represents balance. It represents the light of the creator, the true creator. Okay? It represents thought, emotion, and action in unity, non-dual consciousness. Now watch the eye there, up there. Ultimately, that's what it represents. There it is, the human pineal gland in the center of the head, awakened. It is open. It is our one eye, the spiritual vision that only activates and comes online when we become awakened. The dark occult wants to put that light out from the world to build their new world order. This is the world they want to build. They want to finish that pyramid of stone, of block, of bricks, which block us from our true nature. They want to build the world of darkness with no light in it, where they rule from the shadows. And they have all the light in a state of disconnection with everyone else. So this is a dual symbol, and it needs to be understood as such. We need to bring that light to fuller manifestation in the world, to get rid of all the blocks, and to bring that light down so that it joins up with the earth, and we can complete the one true great work of truth, love, and freedom. So that is the all-seeing eye. Let's see some examples of it. The first place, obviously, where, that's, where that sigil comes from is from the one dollar bill. Again, identifying it with unity consciousness. The word money is right before our face every day. Billions of people say this word, and they never have actually simply split it in two. The one I. Mono and I. And they're identifying it with the true one I, and they're giving it to us again in proxy. And we'll look at how the color green is used in connection with money. Okay? This is the most powerful force driving mind control. This is the ultimate form of mind control. This is what people do dark occultist bidding for. It is the most powerful religion of this world. I have often called it the one and only religion. No matter what religion somebody is, they believe in this. It is the most powerful God of this world. It has taken the place of the true God of creation. Just like in They Live, the hero looks at money without his sunglasses where he can see in an awakened state and he just sees a one dollar bill. But put on the glasses, what does it say? This is your God. Let's look at the frequency aspect of this whole system of control through symbolism, which we'll see come up over and over again. They color money green here because they want to attach it to several ideas. The first is balance. Green is the middle of the visible spectrum of light. It is the color of in the frequency range that the human eyes can perceive. Therefore, it comes into the middle of our vision. And that's a theme that's going to come up over and over again. It, we see that the rainbow energy wheels, known as the chakras, okay, go in frequencies from red and then up through the violet to the crown chakra, from low to high frequencies. The heart chakra is right in the middle. So that is the center of self, the heart, okay? And it's colored green. And interesting, interestingly, the Anahata chakra is a six-pointed seal of Solomon, the blazing star, which we've already seen. There it is. Green is the color of nature. Nature provides this color in the greatest abundance because this planet is attempting to love us. And we return it for money and for the jobs that we feel that we must do with rape. That's what we return the planet's love with in general. But green is the center of nature in addition to being the center of self. It is also, as we've already seen, the center of consciousness, the balancing of the blue frequencies of the right brain with the red of the left brain, which is why I colored those that way. This is why they use the color green for money, to represent balance, to represent enlightenment, to represent love, 
to represent nature. And it's none of these things and never will be because it's a figment of your imagination. It does not exist in nature, just like government does not exist in nature. So there, this is all about frequency control. And we're going to get to how that's used for police. Namely, how they split these two imbalanced frequencies to control people. It's the colors of the American flag. It's the colors of sports teams. It's the colors of political parties. Two bonesmen there, as Fre Freeman uh, talked about. Who are you going to vote for? They're both Skull and Bones members. So, look at the frequencies that are used with police. No, green, red, and blue. And it's above their head, these lights. That's another theme we're going to see repeated over and over again. The placement of mocking colors or symbols on the head. Okay? So right above the head of that police, what they're telling them with those lights is you're in a state of complete brain imbalance. You're in the red and the blue. You're in the red because you're a male dominator attempting to control other people. You're in the blue because you follow our orders. Okay? You're in the right brain there. So you're in a complete state of imbalance in the brain. And they're, they're, they tell them that openly. Not openly, but through symbolism. In their way, it's an open form of communication because they're initiated into that knowledge. To the police, they have no idea what they're being told because they are illiterate of that form of symbolism. That's why they're called the boys in blue. It's another form of subtle occult mockery. They're being told, we own you and you'll do whatever we say because you're in that state of blue, right, which is subservience toward the right brain to your masters. The hierarchy system works through the secret society networks. This is also why uh, the blue lodge degrees are the only three degrees in general that fraternal order of police members move up through. This is called porch masonry. Okay, not being initiated into the higher levels of knowledge, but basically operating in a form of a brotherhood of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. If crimes are committed, we'll cover them up for each other, etc. and so forth. And this is not how true Freemasonry is intended to be uh, carried out. It is intended to be a system that teaches morality, ethics, and the understanding of natural law. And it is in a, is in a deplorable state in the world today. It has fallen. So I'm going to get into some Freemasonic symbolism to show how police are mocked through this as well. This is the first degree tracing board of the entered apprentice degree. You see the checkerboard floor of the house. This is known as the Temple of Solomon on this tracing board, okay? The checkerboard floor of the house represents base consciousness, unconsciousness in general, not understanding one's spiritual nature, not understanding natural law. You don't know what good is, you don't know what evil is. You're ignorant of both, okay? You're as low as it gets. You can't go any further than, than the floor. Okay? The object is to get off the floor and climb the ladder to higher consciousness. And that is accomplished by balancing the left brain hemisphere represented by the solar symbol, the sun, that's the pillar of Joaquin, and the lunar feminine consciousness, which needs to be integrated to provide that balance or synthesis, the uni union of opposites, ordo ab chao. Okay? So, when one does that, they transcend duality and they reach the middle pillar, which is called Jacob's Ladder. The right-hand pillar is called the Pillar of Boaz, the lunar pillar. When you transcend the duality, seeing the world as us versus them, then you can climb that middle pillar and not a moment until. That's when you're granted access to the ladder to climb the middle pillar. You see here, the imperfect ashlar and the perfect ashlar, but one can only make that bridge between the two from the imperfect to the perfect by centering oneself, by coming to a place of balance. And at the top of that ionic pillar, the one on the left is Doric, the one on the right is Corinthian, okay, is the all-seeing eye. Because the ion pillar has been climbed. The ionic pillar. This is a cult word play, which we're going to see in a little bit. The key represents 
the heart chakra, and there's the color green. That's why that is the green initiate that has the key. That's the key to everything is care, true care, the opening of the heart chakra. Nothing can be accompl accomplished without it. And you're certainly not going to be granted access to the stargate because you will not have the key to go through the stargate. Which was phenomenal symbolism that Farah brought up earlier. I can't tell you how impressed I was by that. And uh, as Freeman alluded to, this is connected with the Kabbalistic tradition, the positive Kabbalistic tradition, which is also about three pillars or paths which need to be unified to reach the crown chakra or Keter as it is known as on the Kabbalistic tree of life. So, that, that floor of the house is base consciousness, total unawareness of one's own divine nature. Okay? A wanderer. Okay? See, there, there's the, the brain balance that I'm bringing up. The left brain, the right brain, and the Temple of Solomon. The sun and the moon is what Solomon actually translates to. Okay, when, when we put them together, we reach the all-seeing eye or the state of spiritual balance. It's called the chemical wedding, the divine union. So that floor of the house represents unconsciousness. Let's look at how that's used. It's wrapped again around the brain of the police, wrapped around their brain. They're telling them in a mocking way. You don't see anything. You don't know what light is. You don't know what darkness is. You don't know what good is. You don't know what evil is. You don't know right from wrong. You're a complete wanderer in desolation on the floor of the house, totally unconscious. And they're telling them that their brain is, is in a state of, of that kind of imbalance and disarray. And they put the other symbols on, on the third eye chakra. The hypercube is one of the most occulted symbols in all of occultism. And you, you, aren't, you don't reach the understanding of the hypercube unless you're initiated into some tradition. Okay? It's very difficult to even get information about this symbolism unless you actually belong to some form of an occult institution. The hypercube represents a prison. This is prison symbolism. Okay? The inner cube represents the spiritual or divine nature. And it is imprisoned in the physical world. Now that's a world view. Okay? This is what this world view is attached to this symbol in dark occultism. I'm not saying that the entire physical universe is a prison. I'm telling you that that's how dark occultists use this symbol. Okay? So this is everywhere actually. The hypercube. I, in, in my research for doing this presentation, I found it everywhere. And there were many examples, so this will be a little bit of a longer section. This represents dimensions or densities. Zero D is the point. We extrude the point for one D, we get a line. We extrude the line and we get two dimensions. We extrude the plane and we get three dimensional space. But then, what happens if we try to extrude a cube? Well, this is what the extrusion of a cube looks like depicted in a two dimensional projection. And that's another way of looking at the hypercube, okay? That's four-dimensional space-time, okay? This is what the hypercube looks like if you visualize it in three dimensions. An ever-rotating prison of sorts, okay? It always morphs into itself and never goes anywhere, okay? This is a piece of dark occult symbolism. It is not just only used in a, in a dark occultic way, however, okay? But I'm just explaining, this is the mindset that dark occultists see and use this symbolism in. All right? There's the 3D model and the 2D projection, which looks like an octagon in the 2D projection of the 4D hypercube. Where we see the octagon. Again, on top of the crown chakra now. They attack the third eye chakra with satanic symbolism and now with more dark occult symbolism a black octagon on the crown chakra. There it is. When are these individuals going to wake up and stop thinking in terms of dualism as, as us versus them? I, I wonder, I ask that question. Now, another way of looking at the hypercube is two squares. 
And this is also, it's, it's, it's difficult to find accurate information about this unless you are going into some form of occult school and learning it from themselves to see how they view this symbolism. So here we see the two squares on the Sussex Police logo. This is another way of depicting the hypercube or the octagon. There it is in the intersection between the two squares. Now, I'm quoting from David Icke from his book, The Biggest Secret. The double square, one square on top of another in any form is more secret society symbolism. In the secret language of symbolism, one square on top of another means control of all that is right, all that is wrong, all that is just, all that is unjust, all that is positive, all that is negative. In other words, we control everything. And I got news for you, it is not, that does not mean the police control everything. The occultists who crafted this symbolism for the use by the police are telling the police that we control everything, including you. And where we see the double square on the third eye chakra once again. There's the octagon, combined with the floor of the house. There it is again. Once you start to see it, it's everywhere. There it is again. But you have to, and there it is, combined with the floor of the house again. Mocking these people brutally, wordlessly, because they know they know nothing of occult symbolism. Hell, they know they've barely read a book in their lives, let alone understand anything about the occult. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but it just happens to be the case. You know? No, no study. No study of self, which is the only thing knowledge really worth having. Here we see in the com second commando unit the double square again, very clearly seen there. Here is an octagonal patch of U.S. Army forces, okay, right in the center of the hypercube or octagon. Again, returning to that Medal of Valor, which I said is one of the most vile symbols out there with the inverted pentagram, here we see two examples of the hypercube. There's the double square right there, and there is the octagon. I won't even go into what trapezoidal symbolism represents. That's the ultimate shape of Satanism. The stop sign on every street corner is saying, stop, keep, go keep existing in the prison at every street corner that we come into, at every intersection, at every crossroads. The octagon. Cage fighting, one of the most male dominator behaviors that damages the brain. The symbol is the octagon. Fort Knox, surrounded by the hypercube or octagon, where the gold is imprisoned, because it's the same as the imprisoning of alchemical gold, the third eye. See, what happens in the spiritual is reflected in the physical. Not that that gold uh, actually holds any intrinsic value. In 1984, the movie, uh, Pattern After the Book by Orwell, there's the hypercube, tota representing totalitarian control. We control everything. How, I mean, how many more examples would we need? Let's get into words, because words ultimately control the world. And if we don't understand how occultists use words through what's known as green language, which you can only really understand if you've balanced the brain hemispheres, this is occult wordplay, we look at the word police, break it in half, pole ice, okay, so pole ice, right, pole ice, they're referring to the middle pillar, this is dark Masonic mockery, if you're being called pole ice, well, what does that mean, that means you're acting as an agent on that middle pillar that is preventing anyone from climbing it. Try to climb an icy pole. See what happens. You're not going to make it very far. And that's why we're not really making it very far. We're stagnated. And the stagnating force, th this is what these people are being used to do, to stagnate the spiritual evolutionary development of humanity. And they don't even know that. 
whole eyes they're being called. The identity in a state of duality. Okay? Not just conflicted with other people, but conflicted with themselves. As Larkin said, nobody can put any obligation upon you to do what you feel is not morally right. And these people are continuously doing things that they know in their heart of hearts is not morally right. But they're doing them anyway because they're too afraid of the consequences of not doing them, of stopping taking certain actions, having the courage not to do something, to say no. You know, so they keep doing them. And that's called a cop-out. A cop-out. Okay? They call them the pole eyes. Okay, another green language word pun. All right? Because they're seeing things in duality, not in the unity consciousness. And here's what the Bible has to say on unity consciousness of the one eye. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is dual, your body is full of darkness. From the Gospel of Luke, after looks, the light, okay? Officer, well, they're police, but they're police officers. This one is even more overt. An off I sir. Off I sir, just break the letters down. An off I seer. Off I seer. Well, if you're an off I seer, that means that the third eye or the one eye is dark. It's gone out. The light of self is, is, is extinguished. Okay? It's, it's a symbol to represent the murder of the soul, the extinguishing of the divine spark within us. And that is how dark occultists see, see the police and the military. And if you need more confirmation of that through words, they call them the military. Break that word down. Military. Now just make and just change the vowel sounds to long I sounds instead of short I. Because that's how green language word play works. And it becomes my light awry. All we did is make the vowels long. Okay? My light awry. Well, if your light has gone awry, you exist in a state of darkness. And a soldier is being called a soul dire. Okay, whether you even spell it as D-I-E-R or D-I-R-E phonetically, the soul is in a dire state. It's in a deadened state. The light has gone out. It has died. Soul is the word for light. Soul dire, the one is dead. Okay, the individual has died. And this is, these institutions are all about collectivism. And the soul dire, the, the very soul has died, the spiritual divine spark. If you don't believe my analysis of their occult words, let's hear their own words right from their mouth. Henry Kissinger quoted as saying that military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. Well, do you think he's correct? They're only too happy to take their puppets who they pull the strings of and make them dance however they wish them to dance because they're very ill-educated about their own consciousness and their, their own health and state of well-being and how things are, what things are really going on in the world. They don't really pay attention and so they can be made to dance on strings like puppets. And I want them to hear this. This is going online and it's directed directly at them. I'm not even addressing this audience with this presentation. I'm directing the police and military and telling you this is what your owners think of you. Because I've been around them. And I saw the light and came out of that level of du duality consciousness. And that's why I'm trying to explain this to others. Well, if you still don't believe their words coming right from their mouth, they'll put the symbolism of animals right on their dogs. They call, that's what they call them, our dogs and they put dog tags on them. And that's painful. I understand that's a painful thing to hear. We all have members who, members of our families who have once been in the military or the police. 
This is an, a dark occult ritual. It is, it is satanic ritual abuse. That is what this is, except it's done through symbolism. Okay, gematria, occult numerology. The numbers, 777 and 666 need to be understood. And then we got, need to understand a little about, a bit about gematria, okay? 777's meaning in occultism is mankind in unity consciousness. The three digits represent thought, emotion, and action. And seven means the state of activation, unification, or completeness. So 777 in occultism, in occult numerology, means thoughts, emotions, and actions activated, unified, and complete. This is why the number 666, six being the state of incompletion, and, and Freeman went into that, the Bob character and the number six in connection with the, 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 the V and the W, okay? 666 represents man in base consciousness or beast consciousness, the consciousness of an animal, okay? Thought, emotion, and action in a state of in, inactivity or incompleteness, or in other words, dead. Now, we can reduce, I have a column here called reduction. Add the three sevens together, you get 21. Then add the two and the one, and you get three. That's called gematria reduction. You're gonna reduce to one, one digit instead of three or two. Add 666 six, six together, you get 18. Then add the one and the eight, and you get nine. Okay, so these two numbers are significant in the occult. Again, three, the divine triangle, the trinity, thought, emotion, and action. Well, what is nine? Represent Again, don't take my words. Let's hear from our good buddy, Mr. Anton LaVey, high priest of the Church of Satan, who is no longer with us. He died back in 99. Nine, the number nine, despite others' attempts to identify a certain number with Satan, it will be known that nine is his number. Nine is the number of the ego, for it always returns to itself no matter what is done through the most complex multiplication of nine by any other number. No matter what is done through the most complex multiplication of nine by any other number, in the final equation, nine alone will stand forth. And we're going to see what he means by this. This is quoted from his book, The Satanic Rituals. And again, this is Cub Scouts of Satanism compared to where it goes. Okay? The properties of nine, which represents ego and base consciousness, the column to the left is the addition properties of the number nine in arithmetic. No matter what number you add, grab my laser pointer, no matter what number you add to nine, okay, after the reduction of the addition, you return to the same number. One plus nine is 10, add the one and the zero, you get one. You can do that with any series of numbers, and it will always return to itself. This occultically means that adding ego to anything changes nothing. You cannot create change through ego. Nine times anything, the multiplicative properties of the number nine, always returns to nine, which is what LeVay was saying in the last quote. Okay, anything you multiply nine by, you add the digits together, you will return to nine. This means when ego is multiplied, you only get more of the same thing. Again, no change results. Now we understand why it is equated with the number of the beast. And indeed, LeVay was indirectly telling you, yes, it is 666 is the number nine. He just wanted to occult that a little bit for the reader that didn't really understand Gematria. Okay? The goal of, I'm sorry, let me go back there. The goal of consciousness needs to be to rise out of that state of base consciousness from the 666 or the beast to 777 or the number of man's completion. Okay? Which is coming online in thought, emotion, and action and unifying those three principles such that as we think, so we feel, so we act, and there is no contradiction or duality between those three principles of consciousness. When we do that, we have risen from the nine to the three. And that is why this number, 93, is one of the most powerful occult numbers in all of occult numerology. 
It means love, the will, and the ascension to higher states of consciousness. For one has transcended the nine and gone to the three, or the state of completion. In other words, the imperfect Ashlar has become the perfect Ashlar. Therefore, the number 911, which we all know a lot about after 2001, okay, is the number of falling short of the number of will. And again, this is occultically mocking not only the police, but the people who call them to solve their problems for them that result from base consciousness. Every time that number is dialed, it represents a failure of love, of the will, and of a transcendence or an ascension to higher levels of consciousness. Therefore, we add the two ones, we get the number 92. We have fallen short of the 93, love, the will, and higher consciousness. Okay, so I've illustrated that a little bit in the next slide. Okay, 92 out of 93 is where we got to. We didn't quite make it, right? So we do the reduction symbolized by the arrows. <coughs> Excuse me, the arrows. 92, add the 9 and the 2, you get 11. Add the two ones, you get 2. At the bottom, add the 9 and the 3, you get 12. Add the 1 and the 2, you get 3. That's gematria reduction. We, we come out to two-thirds, and that is a repeating six, which basically means eternal failure. Always six, forever. And that's the definition of hell, which is what this world is rapidly becoming if we don't wake up mass numbers of people, not just small rooms like this. The FOP's logo has significant gematria in it because it is a dark occult sigil. F is the sixth letter of the English alphabet. This is English gematria. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, six. Okay, O is fit the 15th letter of the English alphabet, and P right after O is the 16th letter of the English alphabet. So let's look at how this, these add together. The one and the five from the number 15 representing O adds to six, and the number P representing the 16th letter of the English alphabet, reduces in gematria to seven, adding the one and the six. Therefore, this, this, these three digits represent six, six, seven. And you can see the checkerboard floor of the, ha floor of the house, the all-seeing eye, a Masonic first-degree grip, okay, and the words jus fidus liberatum, which means justice, brotherhood, or fidel um, justice, uh, uh, fidelity, or loyalty, and freedom. Okay, and anything but is what you're going to get with this institution because they are serving the dark occultists that they have no idea even exist, let alone control their minds and mock them continuously. Okay, so 667, well what's that number mean? Well in relation to 666, it's not quite the beast, is it? It's a, just a little bit beyond it, right? Because it means in thought, there's six, in emotion there's six, but in action there's seven. That means that they're acting without thinking or feeling. Acting without thinking or feeling. That sounds a lot to me like just taking orders and not caring about what the results of those orders are. It sounds a lot to me like Nazism or Satanism because the Nazis were Satanists. I mean, look at into their rituals that Himmler did at Wevelsburg, and you'll find out how satanic they are. As a matter of fact, the group I had some affiliations with, but never was an official member of, the Temple of Set, the high priest of that institution, Michael Aquino, actually traveled to Wevelsburg to conduct occult workings in the place where Himmler conducted them. He loved this guy. He thought Himmler was the greatest thing. He actually owns a dagger from Himmler. And as Jay talked about yesterday, uh, you know, they're big into trauma-based abuse as well. Aquino is an expert in, uh, in electroshock abuse. And he was, he was pretty much uh, getting ready to be uh, brought up on charges of, um, of child trafficking and pedophilia. But, of course, it didn't stick because his owners want him to continue his dark satanic activity. So that symbol there represents... Be, being one who is willing to act without truly thinking or feeling. But moreover, we see the pillars of 
the first degree board as seen from above. Just imagine that first degree board again, and you're viewing at it from above the Temple of Solomon now, right? Well, the pillars of duality have been turned upside down, right? This is the pillar that's beyond the checkerboard floor. This is supposed to be over here, and these two pillars are supposed to be down there. But they're reversed on this satanic sigil. What it's saying is we are attempting to create duality and raise it above unity. That's a difficult one to see for people because you have to visualize those three pillars and then three-dimensionally turn that board, turn those pillars upward. So if there you know, is one pillar here and there's two over there, right? you're going from unity toward duality. When there's two out here and you're going backwards like this and there's one in the back, you're transcending duality and traveling toward unity. So what's being said here is we are raising in the superior position the concept of duality above unity consciousness. And that is indeed what the police represent. There it is. Why do they continue to behave as such, these institution members? These institution members. The word institution means the same thing for a big hierarchical and compartmentalized structure and an insane asylum. Another word play, right? Because they're in oppositional consciousness. And the word opposition is connected with dark occultism. The word hashatan is where we get the word Satan. It's a Hebrew word originally. Hasatan is written there on the right in Hebrew, and it means adversary or opposer. That's the root of the English word Satan. Simply oppositional consciousness in which one acts without thinking or feeling is the hallmark of the ego gone completely haywire and that's called Satanism. That's the, that's the religion you serve whether you understand it or not if you exist in that mindset you are a Satanist. And I, I know I'm not addressing anyone in this room but I am addressing people who will be seeing this on many video websites and on the Free Your Mind conference website after the event is completed. Because I don't exist in that state of oppositional consciousness or fear. I'm putting this out there no matter what it means because I know my divine nature. I know what I'm here to do. I know who I am. And I'm not afraid of anybody or what they could do to me in this three-dimensional reality. They also act the way they do because they're under bombardment from different poisons, namely from food, which we talked about today a little bit, from drugs and medications that they don't need and the, the satanic pharmaceutical car cells propagate continuously, never look for a cure, only look to treat symptoms and imba imbalances. You know, the media you take in is just as important as the food you eat or the water you drink. We all know that in this room, but you know, again, the people, unfortunately, who are doing these dark occultist bidding in these institutions, sadly, you know, this is the kind of poison stream they drink from. They, they plop down in front of the television, they're reading the newspapers, they're, they're going deeper and deeper into mind control because they don't read. Jan Irvin likened the word liber in Latin, which is the word for book and the root of liberty, freedom. Freedom and reading go hand in hand and they cannot be separated from each other. And of course, connected with the trivium, which Bob and Jan also uh, brilliantly expressed today, it's poison. It's an outcome-based education system, a Soviet and Nazi-based system. It's a satanic education system. And again, that will offend many people. Well, it happens to be the case. I understand people have good, in <coughs> good intentions, excuse me. <coughs> I understand people have good intentions for why they become involved in the institutions that they do, but you know the phrase that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <coughs> Check. Is it out? You don't need a mic. Yeah. <laughs> Probably should have just done that from the start, right? I'm allowed now. Okay, how much time do I have? Beautiful. Uh, 
Hello, check, check. Check. Great. All right, I'll try to back off a little because I know if I hit you with that, I'll hurt some people's ears. Okay. <clears throat> so the education system has become a poison stream as well, and they've all been indoctrinated. Indoctrination. It's another word for training. And we don't train people. We hopefully try to educate people, but we train animals. You know, that's, that's what they're being done when they go to basic training. Another form of mockery. Jefferson, regarding education and indoctrination, said that if a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. You cannot be ignorant and free. These are the antitheses of each other. Okay? That's a, that's a complete oxymoron. Ignorance and freedom do not exist in a state of simultaneous uh, existence. <clears throat> Another reason why this country is going into bondage if we don't wake up and stop being hoodwinked. Hoodwinked is what these people are. They're blindfolded and we need to be the purveyors of light to take this information out. To understand it well enough that you can rationally and logically explain it to another person. And I know that is a little bit difficult without first-hand experience in, in the way I've been blessed to have. I don't look at my experience in the dark occult from hinds in hindsight as something that was horrible. I look at it as something that was a blessing because I learned so well the dominators of this world's mindset, the psychopaths that run this place, this insane asylum. I, I understand their mindset probably better than most people on the planet. And I'm going to bring them down with it. along with the help of other people who value freedom in this world. So, the idea here is to stop allowing someone else to control your actions when it conflicts with what you know deep in your heart to be right. And I know most people are in that state of consciousness who are in this room, but again I emphasize I'm addressing the people who are in these control-based institutions. Because this is what they're doing in the world. This is what they're being made to act as. Okay? <clears throat> and they're, they say, they claim that they come as liberators, but they're acting as nat Natural Resource Liberation Incorporated. What a great graphic that is. <clears throat> and sadly, this is a very difficult image to look at, but this is also what they're being used to do. Torture torture human beings and traumatize them e into even lower states of consciousness. They're being used to take away natural inherent rights which we all have as sovereign beings. We are all sovereign beings. And we don't need to ask anyone for our sovereignty. We are sovereign. The end, full stop, period, nothing else after it. We are sovereign. That means I own me, you own you. The end. That's it. That's all you really need to know. But these people are attempting to subvert other people's natural sovereignty and take away free speech and freedom of assembly. This happened right here in this state less than two years ago. Right in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, PA, during the G20. Freedom of speech was completely assaulted in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. A disgrace what these people did in the name of just having been given a little bit of power over their fellow man. You know, because someone told them that they have that right. And they don't have that right, but this is all it really equates to. Because the person really doesn't have self-respect at a deep level. They feel inadequate. And it often derives from a couple of things. How they've been treated as when they were young. The conditions they grew up in. You know, there are influencing factors. But I say there are no cop-outs. No, co no cop-outs for, for that. Julian Huxley, a eugenicist, said this statement. 
A really efficient totalitarian state would be one in which the all-powerful executive of political bosses and their army of managers control a population of slaves who do not have to be coerced because they love their servitude. Now, I know we generally apply that to the general unawake people, but I want to specifically address and relate this statement to the police and military because they're not only acting as the regular slave who loves their servitude, but sadly, they're acting as the slave that is given a little bit more power over the other slaves, thinking that they have a right to control them. And this is a concept in the Civil War which was known as the house slave. And that is what they are acting as. I'm not saying that's what they are in the core of their being. I'm saying that is the role that they are playing and falling into because of the level of mind control that they are under through the belief in authority. And again, it's all based on fear, the fear of what would happen if that system wasn't in place, what would happen if they weren't still used as the battery because that's what they are. They're used as the, the fuel that powers the New World Order agenda that powers the dark occultist's wishes, not even their own wishes. They're given a pittance, okay, to, to do this to their fellow men, you know? A pittance. And they take it because they feel superior. They, they get this, this illusionary sense of power over other people. And they have no power over anyone and never will. They just believe, they have an erroneous belief that does not exist in nature. It does not exist anywhere, this concept of authority. Thank you. Um, so, th they are acting in this role. Here you see this hierarchical system that is a uh, symbolic representation of the world that we live in. Okay, with the elite at the top saying, we rule you, and ultimately the power of the one God of this world, which is the monetary system, which is what everybody does these immoral activities for, for a paycheck, and not a very good one at that, even by monetary standards, okay? And that's, that's the proxy, again, for balance and awakening and the true sovereignty and the true spiritual nature, which is what everyone truly, really wants and desires more than anything else, is to come to that full expression of light and awakening. And that's why they take advantage of that and put, put the, the frequency of, of balance and the symbols of balance on that money because it's, it, they're trying to position it in proxy as the true God of creation. That's why it's depicted there at the top. And don't get it twisted and think that I'm, that I'm some kind of a socialist because I'm saying money doesn't exist. That's another form of control. They're two sides of the same coin. It's all about authoritarianism, the belief in authority, whether it's the belief in runaway ca capitalism that lets corporations and government do whatever they want, or whether it's uh, allowing government to have all control of all resources and, and meet that out to whoever it deems f is fit for them. Both of those things are systems of slavery and nothing more than that. So they position, well underneath here you have the priest class which is saying we fool you and then underneath that the military and police classes which say we shoot at you because they see things in a state of us versus them and they're just living for the pittance that their masters above them dribble down to them. But the mass of people, of course, well now you have the, the richer classes of people you know, in the social strata saying we eat for you but then all of the people, the general masses of people down at the bottom saying we work for all and we feed everyone. And this is the system of hierarchy and compartmentalization that we're currently locked into, but it's not going to be around for much longer because this information is going to reach more and more and more and more people's eyes and ears and it's not going to stop until this system is brought down. These shackles are going to be broken and they are going away. But it's going to take people facing themselves and looking in a mirror in order to do it. See, what they're being used to do, these so-called uh, uh, controllers, which aren't the real controllers of this world, neither are the dark occultists either. They just think that they are. And I, you know, I, I don't want to stop calling them the elite. That term should not even be applied to them. They're the elite of nothing except a sewer. That's what they're the elite of, okay? Uh, the true elite people are the people in this room, okay? The people who have awakened themselves.
The dark occultists want to build this, a prison planet, a prison for souls. But we're not going to allow that to happen because we have a greater destiny than that. They want to build hell on earth. Vernon Howard, now here's, I'm going to get into solutions in the last few minutes. Vernon Howard said, human sickness is so severe that few can bear to look at it, but those who do look at it will become well. Self-examination, self-knowledge is the ultimate answer to all of this. If we know not ourselves, we know nothing. The oracle at Delphi of the mystery tradition said, know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods. Vernon Howard put it best, that's where the answer lies, by looking inward and looking in the mirror and understanding what we have allowed ourselves to become by doing the bidding of other people who do not have our best interests in heart and who are actually psychopathic in nature and are just using people to enforce their agenda, which ultimately leads to nothing but death and destruction. And that's what the police and military are being used for. In plain words, that's it. Okay? The mirror is the solution. Nowhere else. No, no place outside of ourselves does the solution lie. It lies inward and only inward. Okay? And this all comes down to the concept of respect, which is ultimately what the people who are still in this institution, in these institutions, regardless of what their intentions may be, still lack at the deepest core soul level. Okay, respect comes from Latin. Re means again and spectare is the verb to look at. They need to take another look at themselves and that's the only way out is inward. Okay? I'll be wrapping it up very soon. Conscience must be developed. The unification of the left and right brain in harmony with each other with the heart, or what I've called the heart mind. Okay, not, not, I haven't coined that phrase, but I've heard other researchers refer to it as that as well. The heart mind must be developed. And what conscience means is it comes from the Latin language as well. And I love how Jan broke down a lot of words in Latin, because I do this all the time as well. You know, language, we have to get down to the core of what words mean to understand how they're being used. Language is very powerful and it's a powerful system of control. But once we know it, the, the meaning of those words comes up to the conscious level. And then we understand what's being said to us through the use of words. Con in Latin means together. Schiere, the verb to know. So con schiere or conscience means to know together. This is the concept of common sense of what is right and what is wrong. And we all have it deep down inside. It's just been conditioned out of some people more than others. Don't be a copy. A copy, another form of mockery. Don't be a copy. Be a unique individual and think for yourself. And I know I don't need to tell that to people in this room, but I'm looking at the camera when I say that. Stop believing in this concept, which Jan also broke down, the word government from the Latin verb gubernare to control and mente, mind. Government means mind control. It means it in the word. If you believe in this concept, you are under mind control, period, the end. And it means responsibility. That's the ultimate solution along with respect. David Icke, I'll quote him, he said, accept responsibility for yourself and your actions, thoughts, and words. You alone make choices. You alone are answerable to the consequences of your behavior. The feeble excuse that your boss required it, the establishment expected it, holds no truth or justification. Responsibility means no cop-outs. What is the point of having principles if you allow others to dictate your behavior? At the end of the day, you will judge your performance and the contribution you have made to creation. It will not be based on what another expected of you or what you did because you felt trapped. There are no cop-outs. The people who think that they are in control have no right to do what they are doing and the people who are acting as slaves 
willing slaves underneath them have no right to usurp the natural law of sovereign human beings on this planet. And it is not going to be allowed to continue for much longer. And the simple reason for that is authority is not truth. It comes down to two basic concepts, and here they are. Authority is not truth. It is a fiction that exists only as a construct in the diseased human mind and human spirit. The diseased human spirit. Okay? The truth is that truth is the authority. The sacred feminine divine Logos Sophia principle that was talked about yesterday. That is ultimately what the truth is. And that exists in the human heart. That is the authority of this world and nothing else. Once we understand that, those two basic powerful truths, that there is no such thing as authority and that the only authority of this world is the truth herself, then we will be truly free and awaken to our own divine spiritual nature. Only then will the chains of this world be broken, the shackles of this planet be broken, and only then will we walk out of this world hand in hand together and ascend the cosmic staircase to the divine light. And from that point forward, the stars are the limit. Thank you very much.